Hello students, welcome to the lecture on export promotion channels in India and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe the function of export promotion council, understand export promotion strategies, explain the publicity and promoting the made in India brand, discuss about export inception council, explain the export promotion measures. Let's start with the concept of export promotion channels in India. Export promotion and export development and to explain how responsibilities are distributed among various organizations and agencies to formulate, approve and implement policies that promote and develop exports. It will also describe and list the components of foreign trade and trade promotion policies and other factors affecting foreign trade. The various levels of export promotion strategies, for example, the enterprise, industrial and national levels will be introduced together with explanation of the sought approach to export strategies. Newly emerging developing countries have been unable to significantly increase the export volume on their own. There are many reasons related to the level of national economic development to explain this. One main reason is the lack of knowledge about the many complex challenges involved in marketing abroad. International marketing is a much more complicated process than marketing and selling in the domestic economy. To encourage growth of exports, government can step in and provide business communities with needed support in various ways. Governments have many different policies, programs and activities to help develop competitive products and increase export sales. However, by any standard, India is far less open than many developing economies. Furthermore, its factor market including infrastructure sector is less efficient compared with many East and Southeast Asia countries with whom India competes in international market. Hence, it is possible to argue that even with the policy liberalization, India may have failed to attract a significant amount of export-oriented FDI and the export growth may have been brought about by factors other than FDI, namely the real depreciation of Indian currency, improvements in price competitiveness and provision of export subsidies, etc. Let us now discuss the function of Export Promotion Council. The basic objective of Export Promotion Council is to promote and develop the exports of the country. Each council is responsible for the promotion of a particular group of products, projects and services. The main role of the EPCs is to project India's image abroad as a reliable supplier of high quality goods and services. 
in particular, the EPCs shall encourage and monitor the observance of international standards and specification by exporters. The major function of the EPC are to provide commercially useful information and assistance to their members in developing and increasing their exports, to offer professional advice to their members in areas such as technology upgradation, quality and design improvement, standards and specification, product development, innovation, etc., to organize visits of delegation of its members abroad to explore overseas market opportunities, to organize participation in trade fairs, exhibition and buyer seller meets in India and abroad. Justification for export promotion activities. The governments can assist businesses in the private sector with a wide range of services from simply providing information about current opportunities in the world market to giving specialized assistance to design and implement marketing programmed and sales campaigns abroad. These activities may be described by the words export promotion or export development. The activities are usually carried out by a trade promotion organization, TPO. In most countries, TPOs concentrate most of their efforts on export promotion, that is, a set of action aimed at promoting export of the country's existing production. The basic objective of export promotion activities is to encourage increased sales of products that are currently available for export. All promotional efforts are based on existing production and aim at increasing the value of foreign sales by a given a target. Some governments have focused on program of export development. Governments were responsible to greater liberalization of foreign trade regulation and increased competition from abroad. Export development is different from export promotion because export development aims at producing new export products and or penetrating new markets that were not accessible before. The aim of export development activities is to identify existing opportunities and encourage new industries or production facilities to be set up in order to meet newly identified demands in the international market. The export development approach clearly requires more effort, resources and persistence than the simple traditional export promotion approach. One consequence is that export development cannot always be fully adopted given limits that might exist in many countries. Most developing countries make export promotion and development a priority in order to achieve economic development goals. Governments expect that sustained export promotion and development efforts will help earn additional foreign exchange needed to cover the cost of imports, solve balance of payments problems, help reduce the burden of increased foreign indebtedness and create additional employment for people. Export development is not only desirable but also absolutely necessary in some countries in order to widen a narrow export base. Foreign exchange earnings from a very limited number of export products often cannot generate enough additional foreign exchange, especially when there has been a decline in the international prices for some traditional export products of developing countries. In many developing countries, the business community of private exporters may need existence to make appropriate contacts after they have done market research and gathered information. This actually involves a number of complicated action and consideration that should be examined in greater detail. Promotional measures and their implementation. The range and intensity of a country's export promotion activities will depend on a number of factors. Human and financial resources, the nature of products that can be exported, the characteristic of foreign markets, the experience of organization responsible for implementing these activities. A variety of organizations or entities can implement activities and the main entities will be the government's TPOs. Other entities may carry out related complementary activities. However, certain activities require specialization, export promotion and development and should be undertaken by the TPOs. Such activities are fundamental and should not be assigned to any other entity or organization unless the activities can be implemented with the same professionalism as a TPO. A number of other promotional activities are best implemented by other entities, not the TPOs. These activities will depend on the specialized knowledge and experience of other specific entities. Whenever these other entities have some absolute advantage, then the TPO should not carry them out on its own. However, TPOs and other specialized entities should have links with each other and try to coordinate since all activities have some direct or indirect influence on overall export promotion and development and on the responsibilities of the TPOs.
In addition, TPOs should give full support to such specialized activities. There could be difficulties with coordination and collaboration when different entities have insufficient understanding or appreciation of their responsibilities in export promotion and development. As a consequence, they may leave the responsibility for all promotional activities to the TPO. It is important to make every effort so that other entities gradually accept and assume their responsibilities. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the export promotion strategies. Export promotion strategies are part of trade promotion and should focus on enterprise, industry and national levels. Enterprise level, some parts of the business community in developing countries have been unable to significantly increase export volume on their own for the following reason. A limited number of commodities are available for export, so export sectors depend on international developments affecting the world market. An example is the falling price of cotton and base metals that are a major part of export earnings for Central Asia. Industrial production of goods is limited by the lack of downstream activities which does not allow enterprises to produce differentiated products for export or provide some form of export diversification. There is dependence on one or two key export markets and supply sources and this does not give enterprises an opportunity to develop products according to the standards of more developed markets. This also results in lack of knowledge about marketing abroad. Enterprises lack export readiness, which might be due to unwillingness to venture overseas because the domestic market offers comfort and security. However, the transition to a market economy may force enterprises to look beyond the domestic market in order to earn much needed foreign exchange and generate employment. International marketing is a much more complicated process than marketing and selling in a domestic economy. Transitional economies need a lead agency to drive the effort towards becoming exporters. Industry level, two kinds of export dimension to consider are increasing the export of existing developing new exportable products. Increasing the exports of existing products means looking at what industries currently produce for export to the world market. For many transitional and emerging economies, exports are mainly commodity and primary products. Therefore, an initial export strategy should focus on enhancing and consolidating the volume of export into existing markets as well as diversifying to other exports markets. The second dimension involves making an assessment of what new products could be developed for export markets. These new products often originate from spin-offs or downstream activities from existing core industries. For example, the oil industry supports petrochemical industries and oil equipment manufacturing. Therefore, governments could help develop an industry to become ready overall for exporting through industrial cluster planning. Industry council or association can play a major role by advising and working with the government or its designated trade body to develop export strategies. These strategies should be based on comprehensive study of the export potential for select products. This will involve clear identification of what is produced, planned production in the near future and the most suitable markets for such products, concurrent study of what is being purchased in foreign markets in order to suggest what could be produced in the country to satisfy the needs and opportunities of foreign markets, clear indication of constraints or problems for exports in terms of production or market condition which should lead to recommendation about how to solve problems or counteract any constraints. National level. The government sets the overall economic direction and trade development strategy. Establishing the export dimension of this strategy in terms of appropriate economic instruments and export promotion measures is critical to national export performance. Therefore, the design of relevant trade policies is the key to a successful national export promotion program. Let us now know the meaning of publicity and promoting the Made in India brand. In the present scenario of global trade, emergence of trading bloc has necessitated the need for increased awareness on the India's capabilities in the engineering sector and for popularizing the Made in India brand image in the overseas markets. With this objective in view, Council Publicity Program does not only bang on releasing advertisement in leading dailies but also highlighting the industrial image of India through screening of its film and title Made in India at various seminars or conferences, by seller meets and international exhibition. Copies of this film are distributed amongst chambers of commerce and trade association both in India and abroad in admissions in identified trust market for admissions in India. It also brings out product 
specific catalogs on a regular basis highlighting the major manufacturers of such products, standard adopted export destination and other details and other to instill confidence amongst the buyers on the reliability of Indian products. The foreign offices of the council on the other hand are spearheading council's direct publicity in overseas markets by undertaking exhaustive mailing campaign disseminate information on source of supply and developments. Commodity Board. The issues related to production, marketing and development of commodities. The commodities which follow, Tea Board, Coffee Board, Coir Board, Central Silk Board, All India, Handlooms and Handicraft Board, Rubber Board, Cardamom Board, Tobacco Board, Spices Board. Coffee Board. The Coffee Board is a statutory organization constituted under Section Clause 4 of the Coffee Act 1942 and functions 
under the Administrative Council of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. The board comprises members including the chairperson who is the chief executive and functions from Bangalore. The remaining members representing various interests are appointed as per provision under Section 4, Clause 2 of the Coffee Act, read with Rule 3 of the Coffee Rules 1955. The board is mainly focusing its activities in the areas of research, extension, development, quality upgradation, economic and market intelligence, external and internal promotion and labor welfare. The board has the Central Coffee Research Institute at Balai Honor, Karnataka and Regional Coffee Research Station at Chatali, Karnataka, Chundale, Kerala, Tandigudi, Tamil Nadu, RV Nagar, Andhra Pradesh and Debu, Assam and the Biotechnology Centre at Mysore apart from the extension offices located in Nkofi, growing regions of Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and Northeastern region. Rubber Board The Rubber Board was set up under Section Clause 4 of the Rubber Act 1947. The board is headed by a chairman with headquarters at Kotayam. It has five zonal offices, 39 regional offices, a number of field stations, rubber development centers and regional nurseries. The board is responsible for the development of the rubber industry by way of assisting and encouraging scientific, technical and economic research, supplying technical advice to rubber growers, training growers in improved methods of planting, cultivation and maturing and collecting statistics from the owners of estates, dealers, manufacturers. Tea board. The Tea Board was constituted as a statutory body on 1st April 1954 under Section 4 of the Tea Act 1953. The board is headed by a chairman with head office at Kolkata. As an apex body for the tea industry in India, the board has two zonal offices at Guwahati and Kunur and 13 regional offices spread over different parts of India, one research centre at Karshion Darjeeling and three foreign offices in London, Moscow and Dubai. The primary function of the board includes rendering financial and technical assistance for cultivation, manufacture, marketing of tea, promoting tea exports, aiding research and developmental activities for augmentation of tea production and improvement of tea quality, encouraging and assisting the unorganized small grower sector financially and technically and collecting and maintaining statistical data and its publication for the benefit of growers, processors and exporters. Tobacco Board. The board is headed by a chairman with headquarters at Gunter, Andhra Pradesh and is responsible for the development of the tobacco industry. The board also has a directorate of auctions at Bangalore and 18 auction platforms across the states of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. Export Inspection Council EIC. The Export Inspection Council was set up as a statutory body on 1st January 1964 under Section 3 of the Export Quality Control and Inspection Act 1963 to ensure sound development of export trade of India through quality control and inspection and for matters connected therewith. The Council is an advisory body to the central government with its office located at New Delhi and is headed by a chairperson. The executive head of the EIC is the director of inspection and quality by control that is responsible for the enforcement of quality control and compulsory pre-shipment inception of various commodities meant for export and notified the government under the Export Quality Control and Inception Act 1963. Export Promotion Measures the primary responsibility of the Department of Commerce is to facilitate creation of an enabling environment and infrastructure for accelerated growth of external trade. The core function include regulation, development and promotion of India's international trade and commerce through formulation and implementation of appropriate trade and commercial policies. Creation of an international standard infrastructure for rapid growth of trade is an integral part of the overall long-term policy being pursued by the department. The department implements the following export promotion measures at micro level to embark upon the short term and long term problems faced by the trade and industry related to external sector. Assistance to states for developing export infrastructure and aided activities ASIDE scheme, infrastructure support air, sea and road transport, market access initiative MAI scheme, marketing development assistance MDA scheme. Insurance cover for buyer's credit and line of credit.
Buyer's credit is a credit extended by a bank in India to an overseas buyer, enabling the buyer to pay for machinery and equipment that he may be importing from India for a specific project. ITPO India Trade Promotion Organization the premium trade promotion agency of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry Government of India is committed to showcase excellence achieved by the country in diverse fields especially trade and commerce ITPO provides a wide spectrum of services to trade and industry and acts as a catalyst for growth of India's trade now in the end let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture India's exports have grown a much faster than GDP over the past few decades. For example, its exports have grown over 11% per annum while growth in GDP is about 5% during 1970 to 1998 periods. The EPCs shall keep abreast of the trends and opportunities in international markets for goods and services and assist their members in taking advantage of such opportunities in order to expand and diversify exports. It also brings out product-specific catalogs on a regular basis, highlighting the major manufacturers of such products, standard adopted, export destination and other details in order to instill confidence amongst the buyers on the reliability of Indian products. The Council is an advisory body to the central government with its office located at New Delhi and is headed by a chairperson. The core function include regulation, development and promotion of India's international trade and commerce through formulation and implementation of appropriate trade and commercial policies.